Hello and welcome to The People Rebel Part 3. We're in the middle of a story talking about how the Israelites are too afraid to take the promised land. The consequence is that they are going to go back into the desert. So let's continue reading in Numbers chapter 14, verses 26 through 35 today. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. So tell them, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. In this wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you twenty years old or more who has counted in the census and who has grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb son of Jephunneh and Joshua son of Nun. As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for forty years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness. For forty years, one year for each of the forty days you explore the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community, which is banded together against me. They will meet their end in this wilderness. Here they will die. Okay, so that's our section of scripture. Let's go back to verse 26. Man, kind of a brutal judgment from God. And we see that starting in verse 26, that this is the Lord speaking to Moses and Aaron. And so he begins to talk and says that he has heard in verse 27, the grumbling of the Israelites. And man, oh man, there has been a lot of grumbling from the Israelites over a long period of time. Now, this is kind of the kind of the worst of the worst. Like it was, it's it's one thing for them to be complaining to not have water, to not have food, those sorts of things. But to to go to this extent to finally be in the promised land and to be able to take it, but for them to be too afraid and want to go back to Egypt, like that's really bad. And so the Lord is not happy with them. And so verse 28, God is going to give them what they ask for. Uh, they have asked to not go into the promised land. And that is what they're going to get. In verse 29, you get just that chilling judgment says this and starts with this, in this wilderness, your bodies will fall. And man, that is a chilling judgment. And that is to anyone 20 years old uh, or older than that, 20 years of age or older than that. So that's going to come on everybody except, of course, verse 30. Uh, We've heard this before, the exceptions, Caleb and Joshua. So not everybody complained. You had the 10 spies that complained and also the the various Israelites uh, throughout the land that didn't want to go in and take it. Uh, but the exceptions are Caleb and Joshua. They will get to go into the land. So then verse 31, it says this, As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. So now in Numbers 14, 3 is referenced by God when they said that if they went in, the, their children would be taken as plunder. And so what God is saying is that, no, this is that's not going to happen. In fact, the children are going to get the inheritance that you rejected. So that's verse 31. And then verse 32, you get again that chilling phrase, as for you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness. Now, I looked that into that in the Hebrew because I was like, wow, is that really how it's phrased? Because I don't know, that just hits me in a certain way of just like a brutal phrasing, your bodies will fall in the wilderness. I looked it in the Hebrew and it does look, it's phrased like that, like your corpses will fall in the wilderness, uh, maybe a little bit more literally. And so That is like, man, that's brutal. Uh, Verse 33, it continues. It says this, your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness. Now, unfortunately, these young kids have to waste time in the wilderness because of the sins of their parents, because of the sins of their ancestors. Uh, What a terrible thing because of their mistakes. I, I, I don't know if they fully realized when they were rejecting the promised land I don't think they fully realized that they were also rejecting that for their children and that those consequences would be would be put on them as well. Now, of course, they're going to be able to go into the promised land, right? If they're under the age of 20, they'll be able to go in, but still they're going to have to waste that 40 years when they could have been in the land. They could have been in the fullness of the fruit of the land, and instead they're going to be wasting that time. 40 years in the wilderness because of the of the sins of their of their parents. And that's a that's a brutal thing. Then verse 34, 
kind of the explanation why 40 years. Well, it's one year for each of the 40 days they explored the land. That's kind of the reason for that 40 years. Of course, 40 is a pretty common number that's used in scripture. And then verse 35 kind of just rounds that whole deal out. They're saying, I, the Lord, have spoken. I will surely do these things. So then that's the ending of our kind of section of scripture, application, observation. What do we have? Well, to me, what I read from this is let's stop generational patterns. Uh, these Israelite children are suffering the consequences of their parents, and it'll take them 40 years to get out of those consequences. Now, I think about this a lot now because I'm, I'm somebody that doesn't have children yet, but uh, you know, obviously thinking about that at some point and uh, thinking about parenting, those sorts of things. And you may be at various different stages. Uh, maybe you're at uh, the uh, completely opposite end of the of the spectrum there as far as the stage of of raising children. They're all already out of the house and whatever. Um, but man, let's 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 endeavor to do this right. Uh, let's do better than having it take forty years for our children to get out of our mistakes. Uh, let's do our best and uh, and if we can put it put to, uh, put a stop to generational patterns uh, here today. So uh, let's pray. And we'll close this video out. Lord God, we just thank you and praise you. And I, I thank you for your scripture and your word. I pray that you would help us uh, just to just to do our best and uh, that these generational patterns that maybe somebody that's listening can think of something specific along those lines. Lord God, I pray that you would free us from that uh, and that those things wouldn't be passed on, but that they would be stopped here because we're in your family now. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.